Hello everybody, this is Badridge. Uh, it is one hour left of the 7th October 2019 and uh, it's two years ago since I uploaded the first video to Bug Labs and I know I said that I should make uh, a video today so here it is, here is a video today for you and uh, I thought uh, let's make it like uh, uh, um, tabs in my browser kind of video you know we could start with this because this is the home page you know that I uh, am, am writing at the moment and maybe we should turn on the key display thing so this is where the project is right now um, I'm work I'm really trying to, to um, stick to writing this as an external theme so it will be easy for others who want to try this or use my theme here. I, I will publish it. Uh, the plan is to publish it on, on the official Hugo uh, page, theme page, uh, I don't know, if we, whatever. Uh, with, with this custom uh, blog tree here that displays uh, blog posts uh, sorted into something that looks like directories like this uh, in date order and stuff the, this this has been very difficult it took me like two days to sort this uh, stupid Hugo template out uh, but when, when it was done I was like man because my old version of this was such a mess. Now it's 75 lines. I think my my old version. That uh, I think I also mentioned that that I never wanted to to publish that because it was so uh, stupid code here. But here he, here is the old version of this. I think it's several hundred lines, doing the same thing. Um, this is much cleaner and much much more correct also much faster to to, to generate and, and this is just this little thing here this blog tree element here um, it will also this is something that isn't uh, this is what i'm working on right now here you can see this uh, sidebar uh, defined as a jaml here but th this is just a a, a, a mock-up because it, it doesn't do anything but but when, when i'm done this is how i want it to to be uh, how you customize this so you can very easily create your own trees and and link lists and stuff uh, defining icons and defining icon color and everything all, all of that done here and then uh, Hugo magic take care of the rest in in the background another thing that I spent almost too much time on but I, I just got the ID I just really wanted to, to make it work and I, it was also a good way to learn how uh, Hugo Pipes works and stuff uh, was that um, you can define the, the color scheme in 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 a parameter here. So if I set this now to plan nine instead, now the whole page will have different colors, and every page will have this color. Um, And these themes uh, is something that you can create super easy by yourself. Here is that plan nine color scheme. So I guess that I could uh, try here to, if, if I would change the background color here now to, it should work. Now we have this insane uh, pink color that everyone likes. And you can see it's different shades of the background color, wh whatever. It, it's really easy to define these themes and uh, you can, and they are written in SCSS here, which which is uh, SAS, and that means that you can use SAS functions and stuff. So so you could uh, could if you wanted to. I don't want to just demo it here now because I don't have it on from the top of my head. But but uh, the default default scheme looks like this. So all, all variables in the default scheme here can be overridden in a custom scheme. And I currently only have this plan nine and nikes here. And then, then you can set that in, in, uh, in your uh, uh, config file. 
but you can also set uh, if we change this to likes i think this page will not change colors or maybe it did not it kind of works weird sometimes i need to restart here uh, to, to get the auto rendering uh, working but now every page here have these nice colors but you can also set independent uh, uh, color schemes for for different posts uh, like here for example i think this one yeah this one has plan 9 set so if we go to first post ever here uh, no it didn't work it, it it's a work in progress guys but but that's how it will work when i'm complete and you can see it's very easy to create uh, schemes and it will not just be colors that you can set in the color schemes you can also set uh, um, at the moment uh, font fonts um, and some some like the width if i would like to i could change the sidebar sidebar width here to let's say 400 now we have a much larger sidebar um, and even if the sidebar isn't visible that that size is still taken into account uh, wh whatever it it i spent a lot of time with this it, uh, and this is one of those weird things you know you, you you spend so much time you think you've done something really cool and then uh, look at this and you just have a website that looks like crap you know but um, it's a work in progress and this is what i'm doing at the moment trying to get all of this working but it feels like i'm quite close now to to uh, the finished version there are a lot of, of, of thing or whatever whatever that's one tab in my browser uh, the tab uh, where I preview my own homepage that I'm working on then I of course have this still have this w3 schools I use this this is the best resource for for web dev uh, don't read the blog posts don't watch the YouTube tutorials just take some basic 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 uh, that's all you need is is on on this page you will get insane and you will get uh, very bad advice if you follow random blog posts or youtube videos maybe even the bud lab youtube videos you know because it, it it's like it sometimes it feels like no one knows how these things works even if they are not complicated at all but it's like all of the frameworks all of the methodologies and everything they are created to make things simpler by adding more complexity. It doesn't make any sense. Um, then I have yeah, also the Hugo pages open constantly. I'm also starting to be more active on the Hugo community uh, forums here, which are, it's a great forum, good activity. I've gotten some really good uh, help from these guys and, and sometimes just by uh, reading other people's issues and how they have resolved them so very good community and and yeah, nice forum whatever have a program here shiori i don't know uh, i have i have actually not tried it yet because i'm putting putting a bunch of things here on on hold till i'm done here because if i start uh, uh, playing around with this then i will get lost in dirt hack world you know with that um, really try not to lose track of my website uh, thing here but this looks exactly like uh, something I've been looking for or I've been wanting a book ma bookmark manager but the problem is I also wanted to, to like uh, uh, have a good uh, integrated bookmark system with, with uh, pale moon and pentadactyl and stuff but and this thing have that it um, import and export bookmarks from the Netscape bookmark file and uh, the Netscape bookmark file is the same bookmark system as Pale Moon and Firefox and other uh, similar web browsers use um, and then you can can navigate bookmarks from from the command line uh, which means you can easily create a like a, a, a Rofi setup thing with it and organize the bookmarks locally with your own system um, that are browser independent but still supports your browser which has been important for me uh, if I want to do this and it have a lot of other cool features for example this you can serve the bookmarks uh, as a web server uh, local web, web server and then you can browse them like this 
and you can could even set this up uh, on a VPS like a, a remote uh, server uh, and host it there and, and, and kind of have your own little private cloud uh, service for your bookmarks if that's what you want to do and maybe that's something I would like to do in, in the future. I don't know, it, it looks uh, on, on, on the surface here, at least, uh, like exactly what, what I want. Um, but I haven't tried it yet. It, and it also saves the web pages uh, f so you can um, for offline reading. Uh, and even the archive mode here, I think that is uh, PDFs. Uh, I don't know, I, I haven't tried it, but I will, and if I like it, which I think I will, I will make a video about it later some other day. Right now, it's just a tab in my browser. Then we have this guy who's building a web browser from scratch on Windows 2000. So he, he is actually using Windows 2000 here to as a, and develops a, a, a web browser, an old school web browser. I haven't watched this whole video, but, but they have a really good introduction here talking about the state of the web and web browsers and stuff. It's very much uh, very similar to, to, to like um, the, the mindset and ideas uh, that, that Andreas Kling has, which I showed you in a previous browser tab uh, video right now YouTube borked up here I don't want to start playing the video but whatever it's uh, I, I really like this uh, even if you're not interested in seeing how, how to program a web browser on Windows 2000 uh, I, I recommend watching the first 20 minutes here where, where you have this good rant about the modern and the ancient web what do we have here stupid stuff here good page here is a page uh, that compares uh, web browsers yeah i know it's a lot about web browsers and web dev and stuff but that's where i'm at at the moment uh, spyware.neocities.org um, compares web browser uh, browsers and rate them uh, depending on how much of a spyware they are and then you can and he also writes like good uh, small articles. Right now it looks like I, I've gotten my new internet uh, that I talked about. I got that set up now, but it is flaky. Some sometimes it um, it stops working. I think it's something wrong with the the modem or the router. It's it's uh, kind of annoying. I will go and, and restart the router. Uh, yeah, so, whatever. I'm going to contact the ISP and, and see if I... Uh, Oh, I turned off the router and, and now we can see I don't have internet connection, but then it uh, opened the page. It's like it, it gets really slow sometimes. What's going on now? Uh, let's do this. Yeah, it would be annoying here if I lose internet uh, when I'm doing my internet browser tab video here, but maybe that's what, what's happening now. God damn it. It's really weird that the you know the, the LEDs on the on the router they don't lead up. Now it looks like it's back, right? Yeah, now it's working. So I, I need to do this. I, I would maybe one time a day, which is far too many times. Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure it's something weird with the router actually. So, so I'm gonna call the, the, the ISP support line, maybe tomorrow. 
uh, whatever. Here we can have this uh, little article about Vivaldi and the spyware level medium. And then you can read why it's a spyware. Uh, and, and I really like this, the, this good uh, actual in-depth looks uh, when, when it makes weird call home things, you know. Uh, yeah, phoning home. You also have, uh, um, here, here where he talks about uh, when he was in contact with a, with a Vivaldi uh, support forum and, and they were kind of weird here. This is great. Stop spreading FUD, whatever. You don't have to agree with the list. You know, these are all, uh, I, I really, I, I don't like these things, you know, which is the best uh, web browser, which is the best uh, file manager, and then you just have this uh, image, here you can see this is God tier, and uh, Firefox, of course, it's the best, you know, it's open. Uh, this guy actually explains why he thinks uh, some browsers are uh, more spyware than others, and as you can see, you have Pale Moon here, really high. Um, but it is actually medium medium tier spyware until you configure it here. But you have a great guide how to do that. And I think you have, have similar guides for other browsers as well. Whatever, uh, recommend everyone to just take a look at this page and, and read about the different browsers, especially the browsers you use, you know, maybe you, you will uh, learn something that you, you had no idea about. And it's important uh, to 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 um, not <laughs> use spyware. Uh, BEM methodology. I, I I've been reading a couple of articles about this, but in a way, it's uh, it's so easy. So so it takes five minutes to understand BEM, and BEM is a methodology for for naming uh, CSS classes. And uh, I found that this is uh, th this really fit um, what I want to do and how I work, uh, and it's especially good uh, combined with SAS. It works really well together together with uh, SAS CSS. I don't want to get into to it that much here now, but uh, highly recommend that that you. If you have no idea what BEM is and you are trying to start uh, creating a, a web page or whatever, and especially if you're going to use SAS, then I highly recommend also uh, using BEM, which is just a way to name the classes. It's not like a, a, a library you install or a program or anything. You, you just, uh, it's a, a naming convention thing that fits really, really well. And, and that, that's one of the, w when you're creating a web page, it, it, it's like no matter how you do it, you will end up with, with so much CSS and so many CSS uh, uh, classes and class names and stuff, you know. Uh, so no matter how you do it, you need some, some kind of a system. And I have found that this BEM is the easiest and smartest system to, to do this. Now, now it's not perfect BEM here, but whatever. It's a tab in my browser. Here's a YouTube channel uh, with interesting good uh, web dev videos and, and kind of highlight things that I, I don't see that often. and. Yeah, good, good presentation and all in all great videos. Not that many, not that active, but but uh, highly recommend this. I have watched uh, this inline SVG and image CDNs here, and both of them were were very good. So I I recommend the front and center YouTube channels. Ahoy uh, released new uh, video just a couple of days ago uh, and if you don't know Ahoy then 
this this is like a top-notch recommendation this uh, video here uh, the latest one was was really great uh, and Ahoy goes goes uh, as deep as you can go in finding the, the first video game ever made and it's it's just a joy to watch you know the production value is is uh, is as high as it can get uh, I think it's one guy who makes everything the animations the video uh, or the music the, the voice and overs and everything and the research is especially the research it's like so good uh, and it's uh, mostly like retro computing stuff like uh, old games uh, or computers but it's also a lot about uh, uh, weapons so what not to, to like you know some videos are seven minutes some videos are one hour but uh, uh, and this is why i wanted to include this because i think Many people miss this channel because the, the, the length of the video, it's like, oh, I don't want to watch one hour video and that first video again. Yes, you do. This is one hour of, of just pure joy. I will actually watch this again someday. Uh, this uh, Secret of Mon Monkey Island was the first video I watched and, and that was just excellent. But uh, yeah. He already have 1.3 million subscribers, but I still want to have him in my recommendation list here. And this was a fun read, some article about some crazy, crazy bash uh, commands that I didn't know about at all. How you can access different uh, different arguments uh, on the command line from the previous command. You can even access uh, com whatever it's very very cool things here and and it would be you know if, if you learn how to use these things in in your workflow people will think that you are uh, a, a, a linux unix uh, wizard whatever whatever uh, just cool that, that there are so many things you can do with bash i don't know why so it's been a thing lately and I've seen it on the YouTubes, uh, you know, the <laughs> the ZSH and the new shell and <laughs> whatever. Bash, bash is best. Whatever. Um, what do we have here? RSS reader. Bash completions. Ah, Luna Lee. We need some Luna Lee in our life, right? Um, I don't know. Fun just came up in my recommendations. Th this is the kind of stuff that I get recommended on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> some some girl here. Ah, I have headphones on. Uh, she, she plays like classic rock music on this weird uh, plank string instrument, and it just sounds so cool. Um, and it sounds so right, you know. The, these these old, uh, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it's almost funny. It's it's a top boomer, you know. Black Sabbath, Paranoid, Thunderstruck, AC/DC, Jimi Hendrix, Voodoo Child, you know. But played on this instrument, it it's like it sounds more natural uh, that, than or, or, as classic rock songs, you know. I bet that these songs were actually played back in the 1400s somewhere in in China uh, with some weird uh, karate people walking around. Uh, what whatever I really really like Luna Lee here great stuff and I also have KXP because uh, Altingyun uh, made an excellent 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 performance a couple of days ago uh, that I highly recommend it's one of my favorite bands Altingyun but some of the music on KXP uh, is uh, beyond annoying but the sound quality is always great and I need to watch these Duff McKagan videos also because Duff is cool uh, whatever KXP probably has a couple of million subscribers already I don't know why it feels weird to recommend it but I'm, it's not 
or I, I actually recommend KXP because it's so high um, uh, uh, production value. The sound quality is so good and it's it, it's kind of difficult to, to get really good sound quality when, when you're doing live recordings, and especially when you're doing one live recording every day like these guys are. But it's uh, very, 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 very cool. And Sometimes it's annoying music, but sometimes it's I, I have discovered a lot of bands that I never heard uh, fr from this uh, uh, channel. And I I usually just open ev everything I haven't heard before. I just watch one song, maybe I watch 10 minutes of that song, if it or 10 seconds of the song if it's not good. But sometimes, even if it looks weird, it can be extremely good, you know, whatever. And, and that's kind of a cool and fun thing with music. It might look weird, but sound great. And sometimes it uh, sounds weird, but look great. You know, it's you, you cannot just judge a book by looking at the cover in this uh, here. And it's great, great stuff. I love music and the KXP provides so much nice music and sometimes bad music and then I have this tab uh, it was like to, or yesterday uh, because everyone who uses Arc knows that it's very important to subscribe to the Arc Linux uh, uh, RSS so you can see if something has broken when before you update you know and it doesn't, this RSS doesn't uh, get updated often at all Let's see, the latest news I guess here. Yeah, here you can see uh, October 6, this post. And then it was like September 26. And it's usually weird stuff like this, like uh, something that, that isn't really... I don't think I have ever... Uh, it has ever been anything that has affected me, but, but sometimes it is important, like here. Uh, 14th January, January to 2017, XOR, XORG server had some weird updates. So. But now, this one, this is a major, major thing, I believe. I, I haven't really figured out exactly what, what this is. Um, and that's also why, why I like this so much, because it's so cryptic about it. But uh, they have created this base group uh, of softwares. Uh, that they recommend us installing here. I installed it, it did nothing. But what I believe this is, is it changes the base uh, uh, package that you always install. When you install Arc, you, you, we always install this base devel package or whatever it was called, um, which installed the kernel and, and the, all things you needed, you know, nano and, and so on, just so you could get start using the the uh, operating system but now uh, be aware that base as it stands does not currently contain a kernel an editor dot 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 and other software you might expect you will have to install this separately on new installations and i think this means i, I need to try this I, i'm gonna try this uh, tomorrow or something I, I, I need to do this because I have to know <laughs> how this works uh, before it's too late, you know. Uh, I will uh, install Arc in a, a virtual machine. But what I, what I think this means is that uh, the installation process now changes quite a lot. So all uh, YouTube tutorials and all of these uh, stupid uh, how you install, how to install the ARC for dummies, you know, all of those will be invalid now because there are new steps you need to take now to manually install the kernel, for example, which you didn't need to do before, I think. At least it changes the installation process and, and it, it should make all uh, ARC installation tutorials uh, invalid, except for the ARC wiki one. And I think that's uh, a really good thing. Uh, because I use Arc, by the way. If you get what I mean, you get what I mean. If you don't get what I mean and think that I am mean, that's because you don't get what I mean. Um, but that's the last tab in my browser here. 
I think this is a good thing. What I read is that it will invalidate all, all stupid tutorials and it will also make uh, uh, the operating system a lot more customizable when, when you install it so, so you can choose uh, even more things yourself. Thank you for watching everybody. Have a great day. Bye.